Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. It's a far too familiar scene in the city of Detroit, a child recovering after being the victim of an accidental shooting this weekend. We'll get to that story in just a minute, but first let's start with the weather. It's a nice day to get out and enjoy some beautiful temperatures. I know it's lovely out there. Let's check in with Ron with a look at what we can expect for the rest of the night and the week ahead, Ron. So we are seeing some pleasant conditions out there. We do have partly cloudy conditions across the area. Some of us seeing some more cloud cover than others. What's happening is that we basically are in the middle between two air masses. We have cooler air toward the north, some mild air toward the south. So what's going to happen is that we're going to see some of those clouds across the area and some places a little bit thicker, other places getting some sunshine. And that's going to be the case pretty much as we get into tomorrow. Things out there looking pretty good right now, but we will have mostly sunny conditions in store for us as well as we get into our day on Monday. When it comes to those temperatures outside, it is going to pretty much be pleasant overnight with temperatures only getting down into the lower 50s. I'll talk about some of those temperatures as they pertain to tomorrow and the rest of the week. We're going to see some up and down temperatures. But in the meantime, of course, you can download the forewarned weather app and get the latest information. All you have to do is download it and look for it on WDIV. Pamela and Will. All right, Ron, thank you. Our other top story that we want to get you to, a five-year-old child is recovering after being the victim of an accidental shooting this weekend. Police Chief James White says it's the 18th shooting this year involving a person under the age of 17. Victor Williams joins us live now. Victor, you're talking to crime experts tonight on what's behind that staggering number. Yeah, that's right, Pam and Will. It's just a shame that we have to be here continuing to talk about how this problem is plaguing the city. It's just another reminder to put those guns away. And it doesn't take much to secure a gun. So it's pretty frustrating to see this stuff happen over and over again. The 18th child shot by an unsecured weapon this year is recovering from a gunshot wound to the hand on Detroit's west side. It's a very big number to have this happen 18 times in a year to have it happen eight times is ridiculous or, or any because it's so preventable. The latest accidental shooting happened at 10 a.m. on Saturday morning on Burlingame Street. A local four crime and safety expert Darnell Blackburn says it's the adults and gun owners responsibility to make sure all children are safe when there's a firearm nearby. As a parent of a two and a four year old and as a gun owner, you know, it's my obligation, not just as a former law enforcement officer, but just a, as a parent to make sure these guns are secure. So far, police have one person in custody believed to be the owner of the weapon. Right now, it's unclear if the child shot himself or was shot by another child in the home. We do know multiple adults were inside during the time. Chief James White is beyond irritated that this is the case yet again. It's very frustrating. We have to do a better job. We just have to do a better job and we have to care about the children. But once again, ir irresponsible gun ownership has led to a child in our city being shot. If anything, it's yet another reason to heed the warnings to make sure the kids around you are safe. If they're not securing their weapons, they need to be held responsible and accountable for it. And uh, one thing that we're learning is that this child is expected to be okay, but this really could have been way worse. With that being said, we know that DPD at every single location, they're giving out these gun locks free of charge. So why not go ahead and get one to prevent a tragedy such as this from happening again? Victor Williams, Local 4. Hopefully people will do that. All right, Victor, thank you. One person is dead after a shooting on Detroit's west side. It happened around 1230 this morning near West Seven Mile Road and Southfield Freeway. Police say the gunshot detection device shot spotter actually notified them of a shooting that took place in that area. When police arrived, they discovered a man shot to death. Police are not releasing any more information at this time, but we will be sure to keep you updated as we get more information from police. Charges could be filed this week in a deadly shooting at a car dealership in Royal Oak Township. The body of a 40 year old woman from Sterling Heights was found Saturday morning in the parking lot of Legends Motors dealership. That's in the area of West Eight Mile Road in Wyoming. Police say the alleged shooter is the victim's ex-husband. They say he turned himself in after the shooting. This marks the third deadly domestic violence case we've seen in the past two weeks. 
The early look at the markets is grim after President Biden issued a stark warning on the state of the debt ceiling negotiations. And time really is running out for a deal here. As Tina Kim reports, the stakes could not be higher as experts say the U.S. failing to lift the debt ceiling could lead to an economic crash. Hours after making gains abroad with world leaders, President Biden is facing setbacks at home with Republican lawmakers. In less than two weeks, June 1st, the nation is likely to default unless the debt ceiling is lifted, a date the Treasury Secretary reaffirmed Sunday. And as the deadline closes in, President Biden showed the two sides are farther apart. Now it's time for the other side to move their, from their extreme positions because much of what they've already proposed is simply, uh, quite frankly, unacceptable. The president also gave this warning about Republicans. I can't guarantee that they wouldn't force a default by doing something outrageous. Republicans blame Biden for waiting too long to negotiate, and now they say changing positions, such as bringing back tax increases when the issue had been taken off the table, according to House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. I mean, Waiting those 97 days and now changing positions every day, that's not productive. I'm glad he's finally getting back into the country. But the speaker sounded more optimistic after a call with the president as he flew back from Japan. I believe it was a productive phone call. The debt ceiling threat is casting a long shadow over the president's achievements at the G7 summit, helping Ukraine against the Russian invasion. Before returning to the U.S., he sat down with Volodymyr Zelensky. Ukraine's president thanked Biden for approving the training of his pilots on the F-16 fighter jet and for the U.S. granting another $375 million in military aid. I'm Tina Kim reporting. Speaker McCarthy says he plans to meet with the president at the White House tomorrow morning. It is the first day of a Metro Detroit tradition. We're talking about Flower Day at Eastern Market. As Megan Wood shows us, vendors from across the Midwest are in Detroit to make your garden a little bit greener. Sure, flowers in the name, but not all the festivities require a green thumb. It's the soundtrack to spring in Detroit. Get your lemonade here! Fresh squeeze, ice cold! Flower Day is a huge party over flowers. Eastern Market and Metro Detroit Flower Growers Association shut down the streets to turn this district into a place where two experiences become one. The growers having over 50 to almost 85 growers in the, in the sheds and then having such an eclectic, different vibe outside. Shoppers like Rhonda Myers are strategic and make improvements year after year. When my kids were little, I brought their wagon. I've done the go six trips to the car, get the big muscle, you know. Um, and so, yeah, this is a new wagon. For many, it's a tradition worth losing sleep over. It was um, dark and, and still like four or five hundred people here at 430. Actually, we got here a little late. It was about 620. Why? Because while a greener garden might be what brings the crowd, it's the memories made each year that keep them coming back. There's a lot of variety and choices. I've learned a ton over the years just about flowers from coming, but really it's about the people I come with. It's a tradition, getting up early, spending time together. You know, that part of it is the best part. In Detroit, Megan Woods, Local 4. If you missed out today or don't like crowds, there are still flowers for sale on Tuesdays until the end of the month. We're gearing it up for race weekend in Detroit. I can't wait for this. We certainly are. New at 6, we'll show you how a group of students learned the ins and outs of Indy car racing. Plus, tense moments less than 100 miles from the U.S.-Mexico border. What we're learning about a deadly shootout during a car show.